Morning, guys. So today I want to talk about the biggest challenge that I see that limits people's ability, I think, to be successful, oftentimes in life as well as in their careers, as well as within business. And I think that when it comes to our careers, and I want you to think laterally about careers, people think about careers most typically in a work context because of the word association. Oh, career, you mean my job. Oh, career, you mean my job. But you have a career when it comes to your health. You have a lifeline. You have a time within which your life will ultimately come to an end. And why do you, as you get older, need to experience decreased levels of health? Why can't you have increased levels of health? What an interesting approach if I think the older I'm going to get, the healthier I'm going to get. Because in spite of my aging, the level of knowledge which I'm cum accumulating over time will to some degree offset the age that I actually am. That's why at 37 now I'm healthier and fitter than I've been when I was at 27 because of the different approach that I've taken. So I'm getting better results in my fitness. So why I can go out and run for five hours and then come back and work a full day without being tired, which is what used to happen when I was 27. I could do the five hours, people would pat me on the back but then I'd be, I'd be knackered and I'd be tired. I'd be visibly tired and have an impact upon me. But I chose to continuously focus upon my health. And why I'm saying that is that because too many people think about their careers in everything that they do too emotionally rather than practically. And it goes back to that reference point of we, sometimes we will feel like we deserve stuff because it feels like we deserve it because we've been working hard or because we've been putting and, and, and working hard. I mean, so many people don't even understand what working hard looks like. And that's something that I encourage and implore you to reset as your baseline as well. It's a big, big, it, it, use that to your advantage, by the way, because most people walk through life thinking that a nine to five type of level of effort, irrespective of the work that you do, should then be requisite to an outsized income. But as much as the playing field is flat today, because whether you're in Bangladesh or Birmingham or New York or Nepal, you have access to the same quality of information. It means that your competition has exponentially exploded as well. So the minimum standards for success have got that much higher because people's ability to learn and develop is that much more enhanced today than it was 20 years ago. Today, you can... Pre think of the world pre-internet and post-internet and think about posting the internet in the hands of the hungry. Those people are unstoppable. And what you can do to take control of things is, again, think about things practically rather than emotionally. So think about things, the sales team will know this, think about things like a data scientist rather than ultimately an emotional human being, which is sometimes difficult. We think we put the work in and therefore we deserve the, re the reward. One of the things that's happened since I've started these motivational trainings is that a lot of people are coming to me for different reasons, or let's say four reasons, asking, for example, for a salary increase. But, but there's not been anyone, which has been a bit of a frustration, that has given me a data-driven approach for their progress or for the company. There's been, not been anyone who's kept a track of this is where I was, this is where I am, this is the results our client or the company is seeing, and this is how I intend for things to accelerate. Almost without exclusion, people have come to me with the emotion of, I work real hard, or things are hard, therefore I deserve an increase. And, and, and some or many of these people have gotten it, but it's not, that's not the approach that's gonna set you up for success. Because at some point you say, well, you thinking you deserve it doesn't mean that you deserve it, right? You're, you're in agreement with that because that's just kind of how life is. And the way that you counteract that, the way that you get ahead is by approaching your career practically, approaching your career like a data scientist. So let's now just talk practically about what that means. Let's talk about that in respect of your career. So first of all, that begins with mapping out every aspect of your role, Okay. So if you're in client relationship management, let's just take that as a simple example. You have the area within which you, for example, you have all of the areas and aspects of your role. So let's just say simply there's talking to the clients in person, there's messaging with the clients, and then there's reporting to the clients. 
And then you need to work out what the hierarchy is and what we need to optimize for. And then there's all of the stuff out, outside of it. So in approaching your career like a de data scientist, when you guys map out your day, have you mapped out your day? Have you understood what the different buckets are and which is the bucket, the space that you be should be spending the most time in? Where is the place that you generate or derive or drive the most value? If you're in lead generation, is the most value that you derive being in, for example, our cold emailing tool? If that's where you generate the most value for the company and the most value for your role, that's where you should be spending your most time. Everything else is secondary to that. So when you begin to map out every aspect of your role, you'll then be able to build a bit of a hierarchy of success. So where is it that I'm most successful? Where else is it that I spend my time? And then once you've mapped out those different areas, what, what becomes really interesting is if you look at time allocation in relation to those areas. And based upon that, you'll begin to see practically where you're spending your time and what value that time is deriving. Because if you think about Pareto's principle and 80% of our value is derived in 20% of our time, where is your 20%? And how can we maximize and expand the time that you spend in the 20%? And what you'll do when you begin to map out areas is you'll also work out all of the constraints. So there's things that are limiting my time. And, 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 and that the things can come from within and without. Okay. So and, 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 and then even further still. So for within is how I approach work and my attitude and the time that I make available to, 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 to work. Without can be my knowledge of the tools and my knowledge of processes and my ability to implement the processes. And then a third layer is the people that I'm reliant upon. So one of the questions that Ali, for example, asks is how can I 3x my salary? And I want to talk about something that is quite a famous or infamous story of Elon Musk. So Elon Musk had a executive assistant, let's say, who began to manage every aspect of Elon Musk's calendar and his time. So over time, she would attend meetings with Elon Musk. She would organize his calendar. And she was either part of the team at SpaceX or Tesla. I think Tesla was probably her primary role in terms of her engagement with him. But she was very close to Elon in respect of time management and, and, and managing his emails and all of these types of things. So she began over time to say, oh, Elon, I feel that I deserve as much salary as the engineers at Tesla because I'm doing or driving the same value at work. OK, so, so e Elon Musk said, OK, no problem. Why don't you take a holiday for two weeks? and take a holiday, I'm gonna do your role for two weeks, and I'm going to then tell you what I think once I've executed your role, something to that effect. She said, okay, fantastic, fine. You do my work and you see all of the value that I drive, the value that I provide. And in this story, by the way, you guys want to be Elon, okay? You guys all want to be Elon because everyone can be the Elon Musk, the CEO of their own role. So she disappears, she comes back two weeks later, and she's, oh, amazing. So how did it go? He said, you're fired. I don't need you anymore. I can do everything that you can do and I'll continue. Okay. So the moral for me of that story is don't wait for any constraints that are based upon teams around you. Take the onus upon yourself to just learn their role. Because that's how you become the invaluable human, the invaluable person, the invaluable man. If you're a web developer, then really, actually, learning the full depth of technical SEO is your, your, your unwillingness to maybe learn that. You could conceive that as being an arrogance thing, but it's a limitation because you limit your ability to influence things that you have some degree of reliance upon. And the inverse is also true. If you're uh, SEO and there's a limitation there, then the inverse is also true. As we discussed in the sales team, if you're in sales and you're relying on other people to build lists, then that's your constraint. If you're an account manager and you're continually bottlenecked by the speed at which reports get done or the speed at which simple things get uploaded, then you know what your constraints are where there's reliance. And you'll all know it because where you're ever waiting, ultimately in the, in the work that we do and most work today, and again, I refer back to none of us are doing rocket science. None of this is, you know, neurosurgery. Everyone can do every single role. That's 
what has helped me throughout my entire career. It isn't by accident that I still am at a level where I can do lead generation to the same competency of most people in this team. That's also a limitation of me because have I got the right people? Actually, I tend to think that I've got great people in the room now that are ready for this message because a lot of it has been, let's say, motivational, uplift you. But some of it is also a bit of a reality check to say, I shouldn't be the bar for competency in several roles within the company. I should be, or you should want to be at a level where your value far exceeds my ability to measure what you're looking at. But the way that has served me as I compare some of my ability against other agency owners is I'm able to operate at a far more higher level of competency than they, uh, they are across a variety of roles. Okay. That's why I can account manage probably just as well. I can sell just as well. I can do lead generation just as well. I could probably do SEO. It's not by accident. It's just I looked at all of my constraints and I thought I want to not be reliant upon anyone. And that is why I'm able to lead the company and add value in most areas of my role. And there's no lack of ability that stops anyone to do that. Does that make sense, everybody? The, 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 there's no re you, you're all going to build careers in digital. So learn every aspect of digital. The off or deferred sense of benefit you get is that you can then, Lydia is able to take on six roles or whatever it is. Like Lydia knows and you know that I know that if Lydia left her competency and scope has spread so far, what you want to get to is that you achieve such a level of, let's say mastery or minimum standard that your ordinary is other people's pretty damn competent. So my, my, my level of average with lead generation is many other people's area of expertise. Does that make sense? And, and if you ascribe and determine to do that, then you're going to, you just, you, then you can get to a stage where it's much easier to determine your value because you're saying, well, Deepak, you know, Temi can come to me and say, Deepak, the lead generation team were down for a week and I was able to manage it all, get the same result and get even better. And I'd be like, oh, wow, Temi has been able to normalize the ability to deliver for lead generation as well as to manage the accounts. Temi is now beginning to build a gateway to 3xing her income. Does that make sense, everybody? Because, because, because if you think about the way that work is leveraged, there are people, if you think about it, that can produce literally a thousand times the value of other people. Literally, right? That's why some people can earn hundreds of thousands and other people earn tens of thousands. What is the difference? It's a value differentiation because what you want to do is have a level of competency, like a minimum standard that's so fucking high compared to ordinary people that you're like, yeah, of course, it's normal that when I go into a role, I don't just look at my role as paid media. I understand that to run paid media effectively, I need to understand how to build landing pages. I need to understand how to write sales copy. I need to understand every single media dashboard so that if I think about it in series of circles or concentric circles, I learn the three roles around me, above me and below me because that's the standard of skill that I operate at. And then then this is, this again, I spoke about Riaz with this when we were analyzing your calls. I always say a safe way to be is to be so fucking good that your success is undeniable. It's like, well, you know what? This person was away for a week per the Elon example. And he was just able to learn the entirety of the role and just do it because that's the standard. So it shouldn't be a question, should I learn this? You all know what the roles are sideways, upwards and around you. Just learn them. Because my value in the marketplace as an agency owner, I, I, you know, I was thinking about it this morning. My value and the only reason we've been able to maintain multiple seven figures over the period of the last couple of years, I was looking at some of the agency owners that I know that are around me. I was discussing it with Eon. I've got some friends who've been struggling in the agency space and they've, they've, they've gone back to, they did, they're doing different things. They've not succeeded. And, 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 and I was thinking about what is the difference because it isn't a function of IQ. It isn't a function of it's it's how determined I've been to achieve a standard of competency across every single area that I touch. And 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 again, what I want to do and what I'm trying to do is raise all of your benchmarks. Because for me, the path should be clear. If you, everyone was the free excess salary, you go. I was talking about this also. I think with with like you go you go broad as much as you go deep. And the truth is, most people today are so fucking lazy that it's not that hard 
to achieve a degree of competency. It really isn't. It really isn't. Because most people, again, we're talking about this concept of this is my job responsibility. I will, and, and, and a lot of people just struggle to live up to their own job responsibility, right? But that's how you find people that are the same same age or same whatever, same time. And one person is literally can be earning 100 times what the other person is earning. It's like, how did you do that? What did you do that's different? Now, again, we talk about the hard work. We, so so we, we, we talk about all of these areas. And I, and I implore you to look at your career, approach it like a data scientist, map out all of the areas, identify what the constraints are, and make sure that you minimize and reduce them. This is, this is one of the reasons I talk about, guys, you only, I think Johnny, well done, Johnny. If, if you don't have, if you don't think that your career is enough, for example, to have a machine that's really bloody fast, shame on you. Shame on you because you're fucking up your own career if you have a computer that's slow. What lack of self-respect if you want to be living in the internet age and you don't have a computer that's zippy, that's fast, that loads incredibly quickly, that has no lag? Lydia often spoke about it. She said, Deepak, I went from a... And, and, and again, if you're watching this, it isn't time sensitive, but you take my point. Deepak, I went to go from a 16 gigabyte computer to 64 gigabyte and I literally gained eight hours a week without changing anything because the ability for the computer to process power. And is that a contributor to how Lydia is able to bounce around different roles? Absolutely it is. There's, there's lots of different constraints, okay? There's technology. So, 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 so I think that what happens again is that we get and 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 motivational videos a motivational mindset is very very good because it has its place but you've got to drive that into pragmatism and practice you've got to drive that into every single area that you wish to work upon okay so i know that for example sorab asked the question how can one save irrespective of earnings and my answer always says that well I, have you read about it have you read multiple books on how to save or how to you know, on, 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 for example, a shoestring budget. These are things that for your own benefit, you should be aggressively investigating and mapping, mapping them out. And if you take the areas where you're fearful, and that's where it's difficult because we tend to avoid ultimately the areas where we're weak because then we get humbled, right? We get, we get humbled because we all walk around with this cloud around or this, this imaginary halo around our heads that we're so great because we learned this little thing about this little thing and that we're so great because we got a fucking pat on the back. And th this is this is also what happens. And it relates to the thing that I find frustration. Sebastian talked about this now, like intermittent, intermittent consistency or intermittent application of good standards. People, for example, and I've seen it happen, it's happened here. You do seven weeks of average to mediocre to bad work. You have one good week where you get a couple of good feedback and then you come and ask me for a pay rise, like in the gates the last seven weeks. And I think that people forget that because they don't treat their career like a data scientist. Does that make sense? You get emotional about the last, man, I had six weeks of shit performance, Deepak, but then I got two high fives this week, so I deserve a fucking pay rise. No, you fucking don't. Now, guys, I'm saying this all to you because I want you to combine the realities of your future being in 100% control by yourself with the challenge that's actually required. And that begins with really being fucking honest with yourself. Does that make sense? And your ability to be honest is a function of your ability to be rational. And the way that you be rational is by taking a real hard look at your role, every aspect of your role, where the most effective parts of your role are, and then things and answers will become to materialize to you. Oh, wow, the data demonstrates I'm not as effective as I think I am. The data demonstrates that this is the place where I'm failing. This is where I can improve. And I promise you, I promise you, if you work on those areas, your value in the marketplace will just explode. You'll become so, so much better because, can, can you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably like, scaring people a little bit here most people are unafraid or rather afraid to look at their weaknesses to look at their blind spots it's inherently uncomfortable it's inherently uncomfortable to look at a map and then to realize if we take the 
four weeks of bad performance, one week of good performance. And then to discover that, you know what, actually, for all of you people, actually, one of the clients leaving was due to work that I did. Actually, we lost this big client because of work that I did. And then people seem to forget it in the same breath and then say, okay, but, but this went well. So whilst there were still significant losses to the work that I've done, I still deserve it. Does that make sense, guys? I think people forget sometimes. It, it literally happens all the time at Pearl Lemon where we see that happen. I mean, we, we've lost the clients that we've lost. There's a, you know, we've got a current client at the moment. They're in the app development space and they want a higher level of quality, for example, of SEO. And I think that people, it's important to document stuff because also I think what happens is that you forget because the emotions sweep you away, right? But the people around you don't forget, do they? It's 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 like the common, you know, if, if, if you cheat on your fucking husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend, you don't send them a bunch of fucking flowers <laughs> and then say, cool, forgive me. The level of your sorry needs to match up with the level of the impact, the residual stain it leaves. So the way that you do that is you document things you understand where there's areas that you can improve by looking at the data. You deal with the humbling moment that creates and then you just go at it like a fucking maniac and let that be your advantage because no one's prepared to do that. Most people aren't prepared to do that. But if you do do that, your route to fundamentally becoming extremely effective will be shortcut. It will, it will become that, that, that much quicker because... I bet your bottom dollar that the people around you, the decision makers, they don't care about your constraints, number one. So, Temi, our, our decision makers, the people that pay us, don't care if you're reliant upon someone else to get, for example, a list up practically, right? You know that they don't care. And of course, the way that you become the invincible person is by saying, well, I can do that. There's no limitation. There's no limit. Why? Why can't I? Why can't I be so good that Deepak... I could fill in for cold callers. Deepak, I could fill in for this. Deepak, I could do everything. At such a basic degree of competency that my average is, and, 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 in your, and you'll find if you look at people that can, 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 can that, that achieve a lot of success, their basic degree of competency is really, really, really high. Um, like Kaylin, bravo, you're in the legal space and you want to move into sales or you're going to contribute towards sales, let's say, and then remain in legal. But that will do wonders for your level of competency. So to, 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 to repeat, guys, I'm giving you an emotional jolt because people do approach their careers very emotionally. But if you combine that with pragmatism, I just think that your performance will accelerate. And that begins by approaching the work that you do like a bit of a data scientist, analyze the aspects of your role, figure out where there are constraints, figure out where you're spending time in ineffective areas and minimize them. If you spend too much time in meetings because your work is more focused on implementation, then find a way to reduce meetings. If most of your value comes from helping the others and around your team, then maximize that potential so that your team can benefit from your science, from your, from your ability. So mapping out every aspect of your role, figuring out all your constraints. And as the sales team heard me, you'll have what I call three PRs, which is third party reliance. That's what Elon had in the instance of his secretary and then he said cool i'll do your role for two weeks and then he said i don't need you anymore and probably he's gone through his entire career doing things like that and, and let that be your approach with your career because your ability to then be someone who can create remember what you want to optimize for and i think that also sometimes people here aren't ambitious enough ali's the only person who asked me about the 3x thing and again do you see you're not ambitious enough because you're scared because if you're ambitious enough, you say, Deepak, I earn, I earn $1,000. How can I earn $5,000? It's quite a scary thing to say, isn't it? It's because in your head, you have this feeling, oh, I don't deserve that. Oh, wow. How, like, you know, and, 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 and if you think about all of the areas that you're weak, you're probably not even aware of them because you have to go through that, get on the other emotion, get on the other side of it. But it begins by writing stuff down, looking at it practically. And you'll soon then get a reality check and once you've got that reality check and you understand that you thought you were here and you're here, then 
bring in the emotional, uh, br then bring in the motivational videos. Does that make sense? Then you start listening to Cristiano Ronaldo. Then you start listening to fucking Jim Rohn. Then you listen to whoever you want to listen to. But don't do it the other way around. Don't, don't, don't listen to the motivational videos and then say, hoorah, I'm going to blindly follow. It's, it's good to, it's good to start. So starting, but we're not, we're not talking about starting anymore because we've already done parts of the motivational piece. And I hope if I've done my job correctly, everyone's got a bit of an expansive mindset and they've understood that to get them to where they want to go in your life, you need to work really, really, really fucking hard. But don't, don't blindly travel. Travel with opening, open eyes. And to open up your eyes, you need to really conduct an assessment of your work and understand where the issues are, because otherwise you'll repeat failure or you'll repeat success blindly. And you'll say, well, I got here, but I don't really know how I got here. Or this leap happened, but I don't really, like, what, what was I doing to get this level of ultimately progress? What was it that led Deepak to say, I think you're doing really well? What is the activity I need to optimize for? So if you think, think about and figure out some of these things, then I think that you'll see that you'll be able to achieve a differential outcome. And that is my advice for you today. So I'll take a maximum of 10 people, just some key takeaways or aha moments from anybody who wants to share with the group that they think, okay, based on what I've heard, I'm going to do this or, or, or whatever you'd like to contribute. So who would like to go first? Go ahead, Ali. Yeah, it only makes sense I answer first because I'm the one who asked the question. Right, so uh, the thing that I understood for now is first of all, reality check. That's that's most important one. And I I do agree because I see myself lacking leg support in PPC area. I, as you said, keep learning. And this was actually my mindset, mindset as well. I learned AWS, I keep learning and I love learning and it, it motivates me. So I stopped somewhere, I'm not sure why. So I need to get back to it as as we in Parliament, we stopped hiring interns for some period of time. And that was something you reflected back on. And then you had started rehiring and it, it was a process you wanted to bring in again. So, yeah, same way. I think I I need to then do that. Uh, makes sense. But but my, my, my question would still be there in your eyes because, look, there are fresh eyes as well. Mm -hmm. I could be, I could watch whole list of things, but for someone who's a CEO, he knows what is better valued skill as compared to lower value skill. So sure. I could be focusing, as you say, that I could be, you know, right tree, but wrong, wrong jungle, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that would be the most, uh, that, that was the thing that I would be confused about, but overall it makes sense that I, I, I should yeah. be curious about my career. So, so, so look, fundamentally today, there's two aspects to work. There's the technical application of any skill, whatever the skill is, paid media, web development, uh, project management, because it's a skill to manage a project to make sure that we're delivering. So increased continuous focus on the, I think the continual focus of development on technicals. So people tend to do two, two there's two areas. And most people tend to focus on one. So, for example, I'll give you a different um, uh, example of it. So your your nephew, Usman, remember we were speaking, Usman, and you, you, you were saying it's very common for designers to make spelling errors in their work, right? You remember we had this discussion, like in some places, right? Be the only designer then that doesn't make any errors in their work. <laughs> like, 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 you know, so, 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 so. Because and, and the reason I say that as, as inane as that, there's a skill that you work on, which is creative. So in, conversely, the skill that you probably don't work on, and I know that you're beginning to work on it, don't get me wrong, because your communication is improving, you're sending long voice notes, you send, vid send videos, but for your own sense of standard, don't accept any spelling errors ever in any work, because you don't know the harm that it does to you because of your lack of knowledge and exposure to that area. So for example, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, does that, does that make sense? Because yeah, just sure. because you All don't good. connect the two, it doesn't mean I don't. In my mind, I think, how can someone design but not see, for example, a spelling error? 
It doesn't make sense. So in the example of Ali now, I can say, how can someone install all of these TikTok codes and then not know anything about running TikTok ads? It just seems stupid yeah. to me. How all can right, he fine. not be connected to the company's commercial goals? How can you talk to me every day about whatever you're talking about? Or so, 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 so if, as you start filling in these gaps, Ali, you'll then become a person who I would say, well, you know what, Ali, you could probably run ads or at least set up the ad campaigns from scratch and understand enough about targeting to then potentially replace a part-time function in paid media. So I'd say, well, I don't need to give, for example, another full-time paid media role because Ali knows how to set the campaigns up and Ali is able to help me hire. So, so I, that, that's the way you can begin to 3X your salary. It isn't, there isn't, so people I think, and this is the thing, Alex Formosi talks about like, there's a hundred golden BBs instead of one silver bullet. So there's a hundred small, there's a hundred small incisions you need to make rather than to perform the killer surgery to get fit. You don't just stop eating hamburgers. It's like, yeah, that's not it though, really. So there's not a direct one thing that you can do, but it is a sore combination of things on a consistent basis that makes your value increase on a continuous basis. So, 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 so that's, I think the difference. So, you know, one of the things that I'm doing that's new now is doing this video training with everybody because that increases my value in the minds of my team, because I think that, well, how many CEOs are going to even take the time to, you know, to, to help their team in this way outside of the tactical things. And, and that was something that I wasn't doing, as you said, six months ago. And I know that it changed my perception. And then in six months from now, I can't keep sharing these same messages because I was discussing with, I think Saurabh, I was saying that, you know, one more week and probably that people will experience diminishing returns, meaning that I can't speak, keep speaking the same message because then my value or the value doesn't, doesn't hit home. So as you said, if you continue the focus on continuous improvement and learning, as um, I think Evan was saying to one of the team, focus on the process and the outcome will take care of itself. You don't know this, but I'll say it in front of I'll say it in front of everyone. Like you don't know this. I was saying to Temi, I think Ali, you could be someone who could become one of the company leaders. And Temi, she's smiling now because she knows the conversation. I'm quite fucking transparent. She was like, Yeah, I think Ali's got the ability to be one of the leaders in the company. You didn't know that, but I'm telling you now because I see the way you operate. And you're also, if you notice, Ali's a good template. He's 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 a person who asks questions, he's engaged. You know. There's less than five people who's followed my instruction, which is watch my videos and take listen to some DM me the voice note takeaways. No one else is, but hardly anyone in the group is doing it. Ali's doing it. So Ali, I tell you, you're already on the right track, buddy. <laughs> you just didn't know you are. But now I'm giving you confirmation because you're taking action based upon the things that I've said. You weren't a project manager, but you decided that, well, whatever you decided and you're project managing the web development. And you're so good that you're so you're doing that so competently that even though, for example, we've got a Dubai based company like Dar Global, as people know, they're paying us 10,000 pounds a month. In their mind, it's not a problem that you're, for example, based in Pakistan. They're just like Ali is the man. So people often have misconceptions about their value for all of these fucking reasons, which pisses me off, like my mom or the color of my skin or fucking this. Or, it's all fucking bullshit. When your value is clear, none of that shit matters. And people let all of this other nonsense get in their way. You know, I'm fucking black in South Africa, or I'm fucking brown in Pakistan, or I'm fucking this, or my mom didn't give me enough food, or this or that. It's all fucking bullshit. And I get passionate about this because that's what I say when, if you're really fucking good, the market will reward you. You will be rewarded. And, 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 and I just want people to kind of level up their level of application and their investment and, 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 and attack things because doors will open. And just as you've discovered now, Ali, because I know that you weren't aware of this because I only a door is opening up that you never even knew was there because I'm, I'm watching. I notice if people come on and they continuously come on late or they come on without their camera on or they come on and there's people talking or they turn up late or they say, yeah, I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m. Then I see them every day at 8.30 a.m. on fucking um, WhatsApp. Every People are watching. So so, so you need to act in the manner with, with, in which you wish to be, which is why I say what I say, that everyone wants the fucking reward and no one wants to put in the fucking work. Because when you do put in the work, it will be noticed and it will be recognized. Like I spoke to you about. 
you drive value, the market will fucking reward you. At one point, you will be rewarded. You will be rewarded. Absolutely, you'll be rewarded. And whether you ask or it comes to you, it will be given. It will be given. No matter if you ask. And sometimes some people ask before they've really thought about what they're asking for. And I always think that you cut off your hand or you cut off your nose to spite your face. It's like, yeah, maybe, maybe you do get a little bit of a pay rise. Maybe, but, 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 but then there's other things that come with it where you think, oh, you know what? Are they driving the value? Have they... So, 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 so just keep doing what you're doing, mate, because it's working and keep, keep developing at the pace you're developing. So learn, pay, you know, you want to get there, learn paid media, you, you know, learn it, learn it, learn it fucking all, you know, be the standard by which other people are measured. That's what you should all aspire to be. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I want in the company. You know, I want everyone to say, you know what, Deepak, I could probably do that. And I took the time to figure it out and I don't have this constraint anymore because I know how to do it. Similar thing with Temi. You hear me mention her a couple of times. She sent me a voice the other day saying, oh, I was waiting for this fucking list to be built. And then I thought, you know what? Fuck it. I can upload a list myself. And then I asked Riyadh. He said, yeah, the list was good. Boom. New level unlocked in Temi's skill development. Everyone should be that way. I, I get frustrated when people tell me they're waiting for other people. It's like, you, you, none of this is fucking rocket scientists, man. You don't need to wait for anyone. Like we're not, we're not, we're not out here doing something that requires a complex fucking degree. So, so everyone can achieve incredible results with the right level of effort and application. And, 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 and it does begin with understanding where you really are, because that will tell you exactly where you need to go. And, and, and I think that that's kind of, you know, key for me. So thank you, Ali. I'll take four more people before I let you lovely people who I've, either horrified or galvanized, <laughs> maybe some combination of both. I will uh, let four more people if I want to contribute. Would anyone else like to contribute? Johnny. Uh, one of the things that I took note, and it's quite true, is the, the map, map out the aspects of your role, understand your constraints, and then optimize for them. And one of them was clearly my computer and my, my phone. My phone as well. My phone, it's just <laughs> crashes every day. My computer is also slow. So I was like, I spoke to my parents. And I was like, because this is something that, as you said, as Lydia said, I can easily change or have a big impact in my role. Yeah. And so I spoke to my parents. My parents agreed, and they're going to help me with that. And it's just like I think it makes a big, big, big difference. And the, those little things that, are, that maybe there are more aspects in my life that I can't change right now, but this is one of the things that I can do that's within my reach that will have a big impact. So just do it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and, and it makes so much sense. So you know, guys, your computer is 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 your world. It's your vehicle. It's your fucking car for work. It's your fucking and, and 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 the differential between having a fucking Ferrari in computer machines is like a thousand US dollars. That's a lot of money for some people. It's a lot of money for a lot of people, but it's your career and your responsibility. But but even going from a battered old Ford Fiesta to a brand, you know, even going up a level, it's it's these differentials do make a difference. Lydia's seen it. It's why I kept banging on to people about just upgrade your machine, upgrade your machine. You'll you'll just you'll just win at anything that you do. So so thank you, Johnny. Let's go, Temi. Yeah, so for me, it's more knowing, I guess, what my role is, something that Johnny also said, but knowing that I am supposed to essentially like guide all the departments that I'm managing, that also comes with understanding what the work actually entails. So with that, I have started, you know, watching the actual training, training videos that are given. So like the lead generation, for example, and also want to watch for SEO. Not that I'm going to do implementation, but I think if I understand, I'd be better equipped to guide everybody else. And also when it comes to clients, just being able to explain what it is we do before I even can go to, you know, outside sources. I think just understanding what's happening on the inside would be more beneficial. So that does come with, I guess, expanding um I want to say like yeah, my expertise in different areas. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it makes it makes tons of sense. I, I Amazing. No, brilliant. Great. I'll take two, two or three more people if anyone wants to communicate or anyone wants to say anything. I don't, I think, okay. I think we are done. All right. So I'll take one more person. So one of the goals for the people in this team there's the same people that speak every week. I would, if you're someone who's a bit nervous, it's just, we're going to go to Surat, but 
if there's people that aren't really speaking up, I'd love for you to communicate. One of your goals could be, I'm nervous about speaking in front of an audience and that's okay. That's okay. So, so if you're in this group and you're not saying much, then I would encourage you to be confident with communication because of course you have to speak to the people that you want to get noticed by also because, because it's one of the ways. Um, otherwise you risk it. It's, it's a truism of life. If you do good work, in silence and no one noticing you're, you, you're doing good work. Is it really good work if no one notices? So it's a weird, it's a weird thing, isn't it? I did all this great work, but well, I didn't see it. Oh, fuck. And is it great work? I don't, I don't understand what you've just delivered. So, so, so just get more comfortable or try and communicate because, you know, I, I, I encourage it. It will, it will always help. Sorry, we'll take you as the last person. No. As you were saying, uh, we need to do an analysis of like uh, a genuine analysis of as to where we stand. I talk about work. So even it's not the question of reaching out for a pay raise or not, but we, I tell my daughter, cheat people, don't cheat yourself. Right. If you're not honest to yourself that have you put in your hours today for your studies or your goal is to kill time today and just have the day over, done with. So there are two ways to approaching life. That is in in school or in college or in work or otherwise. So be honest to yourself. And when we are honest to ourselves deep down within, we all, of course, know the areas that we need to improve upon. And work-wise, if it is lead gen, what is it that I don't know well? What is it that I can improve upon and learn more about? And, and also for me, I don't know, it is inherent in my nature. For me, I don't have a word called I or me. It is always a we. Mm. So when it comes to a team, no one person can perform. So it is my natural duty that whether it is new interns joining the team, so even though I have to access my own capabilities and my abilities and improve upon my skill set, at the same time, I have to do the handholding and make sure that everyone is getting along and we can fit in people in the right roles. Who's going to take care of responses? Who'll take care of end of week reports? Who's scraping the list? Who's taking the care of the overall strategy? Who's going to launch a campaign? Who's going to audit those campaigns? Who will be checking on the email accounts? Are the domains set up properly? There are so many things in every team that need to be taken care of. So having, take everyone along and make sure that everyone is comfortable in what they're doing and Always support each other. There has to be a backup person for each role. I can fall sick tomorrow. Someone else can fall sick tomorrow. So these are also things that we need to look at. All Like Deepak said or Temi said, I was waiting for someone to upload a list. Don't wait. Have a backup plan. Right. That backup plan could be you or it could be someone else in the team. So there, have to be, there has to be a backup plan when it comes to specific skills. If you have a single person on a skill set and that person resigns tomorrow or is fired, then we are in a mm. in a problem, in a fix. Then we start from scratch. So there are multiple things which are going on in my mind and which are happening in lead gen for now. But I was speaking to Benele and Ashima yesterday who are our two newest members in the team. And the same thing I told them, in your downtime, Spend time on the tools that we'll be working on. Mm -hmm. Spend time on Udin. Spend time on Sales Handy. Spend time on Mailshare. Go through their help sections, FAQs, look at YouTube videos, whatever we have. So we, we need to spend time on the tools that we work with because there always is going to be something new that we wouldn't have implemented or we aren't even aware of. That there is a capability of this tool which we had not checked on. Or yeah. next step, is there some other tool which can be better than this? Yeah. So yeah. all these things, we, 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 need to, we need to think. So we can't just log in to finish our task for the day. We have to go beyond. So how is the improvement going to come? Skill set of not just yourself, of your whole team. The tools, yeah. is everyone well-versed with them? So just... If you see anyone is weak in some area, give them support, tell them to watch more videos, give them training videos, 
get on calls while doing your task and show it to the others how it is done. Yeah. Within Amazing. your team, record looms. A quick five minute loom could finish the suspense off in someone's mind. I don't know how this is done. I don't know how Arun takes care of this. I don't know how Ali takes care of this. I don't know how a list is uploaded on the new cold calling pl platform, right? These things, get on quick calls, five minutes, seven minutes. Guys, I'm going to do this. Anyone wants to join in, just join in. Drop a message in your internal team group. Anyone who's free and who's willing to learn that particular thing will join yeah. you on a call. Reco yeah. Record a quick loop or you do it by yourself. Record a quick loop. Keep on putting training videos on a Google Sheet. When I joined Lead Gen, there were no training videos. There were no sheets. There were no processes. Almost. It wouldn't have been zero. But from there till today, if the whole lead gen team leaves today, everything is documented on respective sheets. Everything. This is where the campaigns are. This is what we're mail sharing. This is where this platform is. This is the response chain. These are all the lists that we make for a client day-to-day -day basis. Everything... Look at the processes. They, they, there's there's a lot that can be done and which I'm sure which everyone is working on. So as a team, it's just not me. It is a whole team that needs to improve, that can improve, and that is improving. So that is yeah. the way to go. Yeah, amazing. I, I I couldn't agree more, guys. And we'll well thank you for that, Saurabh. I think it's 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 brilliant. And 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 we can wrap there. And I want you to also notice not what Saurabh is just saying, the importance of having fail safes and contingencies. In, in One of the things that people look at when they want to analyze a business or sell a business, they look at what's called key man dependency. So if this person left the company, would the company fall apart is a big part of assessing the value of a company. So the irony is that if you then begin to become awakened to the things that Saurabh is saying, you actually also counterintuitively become that key man because Saurabh's a key man because he's the only one thinking about this stuff. So it begins with thinking, how can I develop the level of ability and contribution so I can become that key man, so I can do all of these things and I can build whatever it may be. And then you can help others come with you, of course, and you can help others grow. So that's where also I talked to Ali Abed about it, that in some cases, the biggest contribution you can have to the company is really, 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 really develop yourself because then you can become that person that can begin to help educate and train others. That's why they have leadership programs at huge companies. That's why they have mentorship programs at companies. That's why everyone, a lot of people might have heard of Jack Welch, who's considered to be perhaps one of the greatest CEOs at all time at General Electric. General Electric had a company that was able to be a factory for producing great CEOs because of the training, mentorship, and leadership that have had within the organization. So, you know, that's what something I envisioned Pearl Lemon to be one day, to become a factory to producing really, really, really fucking great people. I want people to come here, to be brainwashed, and to come out like fucking, you know, a starship trooper or a fucking Jedi. And and, and that's what I want to have. So, 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 so that's part of it. So on that note, everybody, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you. I know that some of you, these calls drag on and maybe longer, but but I hope that for most of you, you got the value that you were looking for and that you're 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 you go into work galvanized and with a better understanding of how to be better in the work that you do. So if you need to head off now, please do head off. If you've got questions for me, of course you're welcome to stay. But for everyone else, I shall see you later. Thank you guys.